This is the Trump Breaking News Network. Here's what's happening. Putin tired of Russian hack lies, sends message directly to the American people. Ever since Hillary Clinton lost the 2016 U.S. presidential election, we have seen some very interesting things happen. From sheer panic to claims of Russian hacks to blaming fake news, everything under the sun has been pulled out to blame someone or something for why she lost. The two apparent reasons that have seemed to raise to the surface the most, and the mainstream seems to be running with, are the idea that Russia hacked the DNC and caused the problem and that the spread of fake news got people so disinterested in Hillary that they voted for Trump. Off the top, it could be easy to see how Russia would perform a hack of the DNC if you believe the propaganda coming from mainstream U.S. news, but upon closer look and by listening to more than one worldly news outlet like The Intercept, RT or anti-media you will begin to hear a different story. Once these claims began floating around, we reached out to various high-level contacts that might be able to help us get to the bottom of what was really going on here. How did Trump actually win? Who was providing WikiLeaks with all of the information? The elite is clearly panicking, but what are they going to do next? From those sources, who we can't name at the moment for obvious reasons but are connected to individuals inside the FBI and CIA, we've heard that the leaks came from the inside. They came from people who are tired of having to play the elite and cabal's game for so long and watching as it negatively began to affect their own country and life. In essence, these people, like Snowden, had seen enough and were fed up with the constant lies, cover-up and manipulation of people so they decided to do something about it. Strong evidence? There is also something to be said about how weak the evidence is that Putin, Russia had anything to do with a hack, and the fact that the entire focus is on a hack versus someone simply handing over documents they would have had access to that is inside people, is quite telling. The way I see it, if the evidence was so strong, there wouldn't be as much of an argument or debate. It's one thing to have some level of disagreement, but Russia's involvement is so speculative and yet such a powerful U.S. propaganda tool that you almost have to question the legitimacy of it. Judging from the following statement put forth by Russia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it seems they've grown tired of the U.S. push to blame Russia. This public statement addresses the issue quite clearly and is one the American people should note when questioning what is really going on in this Putin, hacker story. This message has been directly copied off a section of Russia's foreign policy on their government website. Of course, take this for whatever resonates with you, that is the key here. But alternate perspectives are important. Frankly speaking, we are tired of lies about Russian hackers that continue to be spread in the United States from the very top. The Obama administration launched this misinformation half a year ago in a bid to play up to the required nominee at the November presidential election and, having failed to achieve the desired effect, has been trying to justify its failure by taking it out with a vengeance on Russian-U.S. relations. However, the truth about the White House orchestrated provocation is bound to surface sooner or later. In fact, this is already happening. On December 8th. U.S. media quotes of Georgia's Secretary of State Brian Kemp as saying that the local authorities tracked down the origin of a hacker attack on his voter registration database after the election. The attack was traced to an IP address of the Department of Homeland Security. This was followed by an attempt to quickly cover up this information by a flood of new anti-Russian accusations that did not contain a single piece of evidence. We can only add that if Washington takes new hostile steps, it will receive an answer. This applies to any actions against Russian diplomatic missions in the United States, which will immediately backfire at U.S. diplomats in Russia. The Obama administration probably does not care at all about the future of bilateral relations, but history will hardly forgive it for this opera new la deluge attitude. Source. What to do with this information? As stated many times on our news platform, we take an approach of informing creating a shift in perspective and then inspiring action from that new perspective. By seeing the world's happenings through different perspectives and fresh eyes, we can begin to shift our consciousness and ultimately create a world that better reflects what people want versus what their governments slash the elite are creating. Again, 
we help to shed light on how things truly function, as opposed to the illusory story mainstream news and media project. The more we understand how our world really functions, the more we can begin to see through the lies and manipulation being used to control us and keep us down. This isn't about us versus them and having to fight back, it's about knowing. When you become aware you begin to see the world very differently and ultimately you make different choices. You no longer just follow along your daily actions robotically, you get in touch more with you and your own stream of thought. The real reason the West is pushing war with Russia. There is so much talk about war these days. Many believe World War III has already begun given how many nations are involved in fighting around specific issues. But in truth it all comes down to how we look at it and we must also remember how much war is used as a means to create fear, control as well as drive up the economy for certain corporations and power interests. Now it's no secret that oil has been a big part of many of the ongoing wars over the past few decades. The threat of terrorism has also been, but in a manipulative way. Those who have tracked the investigations into 9-11 that followed the event know that the official story we have been told is false, so why did we hear a lie? Why were we told something happened that didn't and what sort of enemy was created as a result? This is where things get interesting because we can begin to understand what really goes on with much of this conflict and why allied parties fund opposition parties in the war to keep it going. But more on this later. Syria doesn't have a huge oil reserve, so why would this be of interest? Why is the US pushing so hard for a regime change in Syria? Why are they funding a civil war in Syria? Hint, it's the same reason they sponsored a coup in Ukraine. And it's why Russia has dug its heels in and is standing in the way. Two natural gas pipelines travel from the Middle East and into Syria right where it enters a port that leads to Europe. The Russia-backed pipeline runs from Iraq and into Syria, while the one that is US-backed runs from Qatar. Check out the video below for more on this. Why is it good to know this? There is a mass shift going on in our world and so much is coming to light. We made a film about this a few years ago that is incredibly relevant today. Check it out here. The more we understand how our world really functions, the more we can begin to see through the lies and manipulation being used to control us and keep us down. This isn't about us versus them and having to fight back, it's about knowing. When you become aware you begin to see the world very differently and ultimately you make different choices. You no longer just follow along your daily actions robotically, you think about things, you get in touch more with you and your own stream of thought. This is a shift in consciousness that helps to change the way we think as a whole, and as we do that physical changes follow in our world. With a new way of thinking and seeing things we take different actions. Oftentimes we also venture onto a spiritual path of exploring more about who we truly are and what it means to be human. This is ultimately what drives the greatest change and it can start with seeing our world more clearly versus blindly following it or avoiding what's really going on. What can we do? Stay awake, stay aware. These can be important factors. Further, you can share alternative views and perspectives with others to help people see the world differently. If you think it doesn't work or is meaningless, look at what has happened over the past year. Independent media and alternative viewpoints have gotten so big and powerful over the mainstream media that things aren't playing out in the world as expected. This has caused power structures to change the way they do everything in order to combat a populace that is waking up. They are in fight mode, but it's important we don't enter it. Again, this isn't about a war or fighting, but about doing what we can to continue to shift our consciousness and find peace in our world. All of that change starts within each of us. So as you see through the world more clearly every day, Remember that others will begin to see that the two the more we peacefully and lovingly share information with them. Remember, as we begin to awaken more, that action will be taken to create a better world on the ground. But that action is born from a shift in our awareness, our consciousness. The video link for the video is in the article below in our description. This has been, the Trump Breaking News Network. Please subscribe and share to stay up to date on the latest news about our president.
Be informed.